Today I'm gonna to be drawing a little mad scientist alligator guy, but unfortunately I can't show you how I do it because who knows, you might steal my ideas. Just kidding, I'll show you how it's done. Greetings people of the internet, I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. Welcome back to the Underground Laboratory where we create robots, alien zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And today we're gonna to do none of those things. We're gonna do an animal, but, but we're going to keep it mad sciencey because we're going to do an alligator lab scientist assistant or maybe he's a scientist himself. I don't know. We'll find out once we get to the drawing. But I also wanted to talk about, I got a little topic I want to talk about. I think a lot of people are afraid to share stuff online and in this day and age, ah, uh, that's not such a good idea. And I don't think you need to worry about sharing your stuff, people ripping off your stuff and everything. And uh, you know, it's, it's good to give back. It's good to give, put that information out there so other people People can learn from it and that's why I do these videos so I'm hoping you guys pick up some things because I'm learning from people all over the internet every day so I'm so thankful that it's around and people are sharing their stuff and uh, I think you need to get with the program if you aren't already doing that so we're gonna talk about that and we are gonna work on this sketch right now if you are an artist in today's age you need to be showing your work so are you if the answer is no then why are you afraid it's not good enough maybe? Are you afraid somebody's gonna steal your work? Whatever the case, you need to get over it. People aren't expecting to see your best work online. Look through, you know, there's a lot of great work out there, okay? But people wanna see your process. So don't worry so much about, oh, this isn't my best work. So in order to kind of prove my point, let's just flip it around. What is What are the kind of things you like to see? We all like to see great stuff, but we want to see how that comes together. When I was a kid growing up, it wasn't like that we didn't have the internet, we didn't, get, we didn't have Instagram, we couldn't see the sketching phase and how everything worked. So it was much harder for us as up and coming artists to figure out how this, basically how the sausage is made. Yeah, maybe that's not the best analogy because I think that means that if you see how it's made, you won't want to eat it. But in this case, if you see the process, you're still going to want that finished product. You're going to want to see how that comes together. But, you know, I used to clamor for anything that I could see how my favorite artists create stuff. But now everything is just laid out for you online and you can see all that. I mean, it's really an amazing time. When I was a kid, you know, Every once in a while there'd be like a, uh, the making of Star Wars books or like they do a little special and I was just glued to my television set anytime something like that came on because I could see how they made the movie, all the different you know, sound effects and how they came up with all these special effects which back there were all practical and it was really cool but that was, that was a rarity to get to see some of that. It's the same thing with comic books. You saw the finished product for a comic but you didn't really know how to create it. I was a kid drawing on the floor and I had the, you know, I had the wrong size paper. I was just, you know, I didn't have the dimensions right. Uh, there was no inking involved, but now, you know, it, you, that, all that stuff is out there for you to see. And it, it took a long time until I actually was able to, there was this one art gallery that focused on like, you know, they they focused on comic book art. So I got to go there and I got to see it and you see all the mistakes and the whiteout and all that kind of stuff. And that was kind of my introduction to all this stuff. But, you know, now, now that stuff is just everywhere and you need to get with it and you need to do that too. You need to put your stuff out there because for one thing, it builds expectation for that final piece. If people see, you know, how this started off and they can follow along and they can see, you know, just like what I'm doing now with the process. I mean, you're seeing the behind the scenes. You're seeing how it comes together. If I just showed this finished piece, yeah, okay, might might be all right. But there's a whole different level when you're when you're showing somebody how everything comes together. And that's kind of why I do these YouTube videos. So whatever it is, if it's YouTube or Instagram, whatever you're more comfortable with, you need to show, you know, you need to show that process. So think about it like this. I had a Kickstarter a while back for my comic book. If I hadn't been sharing through like 100 Days of Main Comics and, and on my YouTube channel how that comic book was coming together, I don't think it would have funded at all. If I just said, hey, I've got a finished comic book, people wouldn't know what it was. But I was able to kind of entice people and, 
and get them on board by showing them, you know, this is what I'm working on, this is what I'm working on. And with, when that happens, they're just waiting. They're like chopping the bit. Oh, man, I want to see how this thing is finished. So, you know, that's what you need to do. Now, unless, you know, unless you're under some sort of NDA where you're not allowed to show your process. And, you know, if you're working with a client, you may even say, you know, is it okay if I show this? Because in a lot of times, and I can see there's certain reasons why they don't want that shown, okay? But it might be to the client's benefit to have that stuff out there so you can build that expectation for that finished product, same as it would be for you. So, you know, one of the most common, I think the absolute most common question most artists get if they're on YouTube and they're kind of sharing their processes, you know, what kind of tools do you use? So, I mean, that should just go to show you that people want to know how things are made, how you put things together. And you'll, you'll be better off if, think about it this way, if you're just showing your finished piece, that's one piece you're sharing. If you're showing like the previous five steps that it took you to get there, that's more sharing out there and it's more opportunities to, you know, build that audience. So you definitely want to share your work. Now, maybe you're worried that by pulling back those curtains and letting people into how you create stuff, that they're going to take all that information and basically, you know, copy you and create things the same way you would. I don't really concern myself too much with that one because all artists are different, okay? And I could show you exactly how to do something and not everyone is even going to take all that information and do anything with it. Only a small percentage of those people will actually, you know, do that. And if they do, I say more power to them if, you know, I. It, the whole idea of like trade secrets and things like that in art is a little ridiculous to me. Recently, I was talking to a friend on the Artcaster show that I do, and there was a we had a little difference of opinion as far as digital artists who share their um, Photoshop files, their PSD files with all the layers and everything. So you know they get that file, and it was usually part of a like a Patreon, like an extra or something like that. And my friend was kind of concerned that you're either you're giving too much away or somebody's going to be able to take that and you know reprint it and everything like that that's not i guess that's not really what we're talking about actually people stealing the actual physical artwork that's a different topic altogether but as far as somebody being able to look at your photoshop file and seeing how you did all the different techniques and everything uh, what's the big deal? Because even if they know how to do that, they may not be as accomplished as an artist as you are. They're not going to be able to paint like you, even if they know. You can tell everyone all the tools, whether it's physical or digital. You can tell everyone the entire process. That doesn't mean that they're going to be able to do what you do. And, you know, it doesn't mean... And the whole idea of competition... Uh, my friend Corey Kerr put out a video about how you know, competition and art, that art is not a zero-sum game. And if I can remember, I will put a link to that up there. But you definitely should check that out. I try to not look at other artists as competition, but rather a community. It's kind of like the, the old saying, the rising tide raises all ships. So the, the more people are doing better in art, the more that's going to help you out in your career. The more they're out there being successful, the more they can share with you those tips and things to make you successful. And that's, that's kind of what I try to do here on, you know, on this channel. I have no problems. I'm an open book as far as the supplies I use, different vendors I use, any, you know, whatever company I use to print my stuff. Anything you want to know, I will tell you. If I don't, if I don't leave links, which I usually do in my description, but if I don't, just let me, you know, hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what you want to know, and I would be happy to share it with you. I don't, there's, there, to me, there's no trade secrets because most of the secret, if you call them secrets, most of, the, most of these processes that that I have learned or I have picked up were from other artists who are willing to share those with me. So why not pay that forward? I'm not, I'm not trying to hide anyway. Art, and again, everyone's gonna take this information and run with it in a different way. So anyway, so as far as, you know, 
the process is concerned, that's what I'm doing here. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, I'm using, for this illustration, I'm using a variety of alcohol-based markers, mostly Copics or Copics, however you want to pronounce them, but, you know, I use Spectrum Noir and uh, a Hoo Hoo and uh, Pantone or whatever. Whatever works, it doesn't really matter. They, they all seem to work pretty well together. Um, the ink, I, I use, sometimes I use a brush pen, sometimes I use regular like India ink or like a manga ink. If I was to print this, I would probably use cat print. If it's on a t-shirt, probably printful. And I've got hundreds of videos showing how I do all this stuff. And that's the good thing about this. You can put out all these videos. You can help help yourself by building this audience, by sharing all this information. And you're helping other people too because you're giving them the tools to further their career. And in the end, pretty much everybody wins. So don't be afraid to show your process. Put your stuff out there. Share your work. All right, thanks for joining me, everyone. And I want to know what you guys think. What are your What are your thoughts on sharing your work, putting it out there? Are you worried somebody's going to steal it? Are you happy to let other people know how you do things? Are there certain things you keep close to the chest but put other things out there? I want to know. Just let me know in the comments section, and I'll see you guys later. That is all. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining me here in the Art Lab. There's a lot of other great content on the channel, so click that subscribe button, and you won't miss a thing. If you're an aspiring evil genius, visit circlips.com for all your mad science supply needs. And if you want to contact me, hit me up in the comments section or follow me on social media. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you then.